Hey, what's going on everybody? How you doing today? Happy New Year to everybody that's watching this video. We're in a new year, um, beginning of new things. Put all the old scraps behind you, leave it there, and don't come back to grab it, okay? Because we're in a new year. Happy 2013 to you, or at any time you're watching this video, guys. Um, happy uh, New Year, and there's always um, a new day for new and better things, okay? Um, what I'm going to do these next few days, I'm going to do a video series because I've been getting a ton of emails in my um, email inbox and messages in my social media all over. I get tons of messages every single day, seven days a week, and I try to um, answer a much, as much questions as I can and help as many as people out. For these, uh, <clears throat> over the next few days, these are the most questions I've been getting the most, um, you know, with different people. So I want to make this these. Um, video series of bra so everybody can see this and apply these tips to their um, real estate investing business. Um, in today's um, video series, which is video one, we're going to talk about five ways to find motivated sellers, okay? And pretty much, um, before I get into the meat of this topic here, the main thing here is you have to market, okay? Um, what, I, what I find with most people um, starting any business, they don't market. They're not marketers. You really have to become a marketer. That's that's if you have your own own uh, shoe business, your own nail shop, in anything real estate investing. You st you still have to market to find uh, to bring in customers. And in real estate investing, customers are sellers. Okay, those those are your clients. Um, so all right. So just to get in the meat of this topic, five ways to find motivated sellers. The first way. Guys, this is probably one of my favorites. Um, I probably close more deals using this technique alone. Um, is target absentee owners, okay? And pretty much what an absentee owner is is a uh, owner, a um, a person who owns a property, just say in California, but they live, but they don't live or reside in that property, in California. They might live in another city of California, or they might live in, let's say, uh, Georgia. Okay, so that pretty much the absentee owner is somebody who resides in a property, but they don't, um, they, I'm sorry, they live, they, they own a property, but they don't reside in that property that they own. That's the absentee owner. You have in-town absentee owners, you have out-of-town absentee owners. In-town are the ones that stay in, the, stay in that same uh, state, pretty much, with that property they own that. Or out-of-town, is, of course, is uh, you know, self-explanatory. They live in another state or country from where the uh, property they own is at, okay? So I like to, you know, pretty much, I like to target in-town and out-of-town absentee owners. Um, and pretty much what you want to do is gather your criteria criteria when you're getting this absentee owner um, list, okay? And let me segue for, for a little bit. You, you get the list from melissadata.com or you get it from ListSource or depending on what state you live in, you can get it from the MLS as well, uh, which uh, I like to grab, you know, from MLS. Uh, but um, the criteria you want to you want to build up when you're getting your list together is the year built of the property. Um, you can also do the loan to value, which I like to do one to twenty five percent loan to value. Okay, and what that pretty much means is uh, how much equity is in the property. Okay, so let's say if you have uh, 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 I believe, or not a lead, but it's an absentee owner that has 1% loan to value. That means they have 99% equity in the property. If you have a have an absentee owner with 25% loan to value, that means they have 75% equity. So basically, you're building your loan to value with the uh, properties or absentee owners list with the most equity, which I like. Okay, um, the year built, I like to go to like 1930, some somewhere around there, to all the way up to like 1980. Okay. Um, the last sales date, uh, I like to go 1999 and under. Sometimes I go 2000 since you know we're getting more up into the years, but either 2000 or 1999 and under, as far as this last sales date of the property. Um, so those kind of criteria you want: beds, uh, two a minimum two uh, bedroom, uh, bat one bathroom, uh, 800 square feet or more. Okay, minimum 800 square feet. Those are the type of criteria you do. You, you, you're, you're getting together when you're buying an absentee owner list. Again, melissadata.com, listsource.com. And if you have an MLS and you have a, you live in a disclosure state, you can go to the MLS as well to grab absentee owners list. Okay? Um, another way 
is cruising for cash. This is your second way to find motivated sellers. Cruising for cash, okay? Um, or some people call it driving for dollars. You just want to pretty much drive in your neighborhood, you know, find some in neighborhoods that's like low end, you know, hoods, a little step up from the hood or ghetto, and um, look for vacant properties, boarded up houses, uh, um, overflowing mail, um, stacked up white pages, yellow pages, that type of stuff. Those ugly, beat up houses that's in those neighborhoods. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. When I'm sure you've seen them, or you might have just never, or just overlooked them, you know. Um, but these are the gold mine properties, okay? So that's first step. You find these properties when you're cruising for cash. Second, second step when you're cruising for cash is once you find that property, you want to jot down the address of that property. And once you jot down the address, you want to go and cross-reference and um, do a reverse search and find, in, the, in your public record, and find the owner's name and their real mailing address, okay? So sometimes that mailing address is not, most of the time that mailing address is not the same as that vacant property that they own because it's vacant. Nobody lives there, so that mail has to go somewhere, right? So once you find their, their mailing address and their name, you're going to send them a, a postcard, and or you, you're gonna send them a letter just saying hey i buy houses uh i would like to buy a house on blank street i pay cash i can close in seven to ten days call me now leave your name and your phone number type thing or leave your website as well and you'd be surprised these type of people they'd be so they, they're shocked that people want to buy these ugly beat up properties they just want to get rid of these properties and um and you'll be pretty much uh, a, a blessing to them by reaching out to them a lot of these a lot of times just say if the, the property that you found that was vacant, they have the same mailing address as that vacant property, then you want to go a little step further. Uh, we, I use a website called findtheseller.com. It's pretty much um, it's like a private investigator type service, which they will, find, they will go out there and find the seller for you. you know, they'll find their real address. They'll find their, their, um, um, any family member, siblings, and phone numbers that, that's, uh, that's tied to that property. And they go a step further to find the information, and they provide you that within like 24 to 48 hours, usually within a day, um, quickly. And then, then once they once you get the real mail address, you just send them a letter or a postcard. All right, the third way to find motiva motivated seller is bandit signs. Okay, pretty much, I'm sure you know what these are. These are just the little signs you see on the street with the little stakes sitting on the corner of the street that says probably we buy junk cars or. Uh, vote for a blank governor, whatever. We buy houses, you see them all over the place. Everywhere you go, every state, I, I see them. You can't miss them. But these banner signs work. Uh, the thing with, 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 with how I use banner signs is I like to be creative with them. I just don't put we buy houses on um, the banner signs, okay? Um, I forgot, one of my coaching clients had a real, I just told him to be creative. I forgot what he put on it, but we, 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 close, we have a deal on a contract that's supposed to close, we're going through little title issues. But it's going to net us ten thousand dollars. I forgot. He put something like, um, what was that he put? It was, uh, it, it was. Oh yeah, uh, sell your house to Big Papa. I mean, it it, it sounds kind of cheesy, but you got to figure. I mean, hey, that 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 sign got many calls. Got a many calls. So you know, you want to be you know your banner signs. You know, we buy houses in the hood. We buy bad houses in bad shape, we buy the worst looking houses, like things like that, kind of like think a little bit outside the box instead of just we buy houses on your signs. And I use 12 by 18 states because they're a little shorter than 18 by 24. Um, I'm sorry, I use 12 by 24 si bandit sign, not the 18 by 24 bandit sign size because those are a little smaller, the 12 by 24, and they last a little bit longer and we use short stakes. Um, the fourth way is probates, guys, your probate list. Just like the absentee list, this is another list you can target. It's probates. Probates are very effective. Um, and I, I usually get my probate list from probatesdaily.com where you go to your courthouse and just um, and just scrape down the probates of the, of the people that, that just died. And you, they, they have that in your public record in most states if you have a um, disclosure state. Another way, uh, fifth way, guys, is another one, probably one of my second favorites is the inherited property list, okay? Uh, these are properties that, uh, that you know, um, well, this list is pretty much uh, a list where the, the, the homeowner died in the family and the, the property already got inherited to a family member or sibling in that family. So it already went through the probate process. So they already own this property 
And nine or ten times when, when they're calling you, they had no plan to have a property in their name. So they want to get rid of this property, okay? They're motivated to sell. And um, I usually get this list from uh, usleadlist.com. Um, and pretty much, I like this uh, US lead list and when you buy the inherited list because it, you, you don't have, really have much competition in your market. Uh, they only allow like three people per county to hold that list. So just say if you was in the uh, Virginia Beach City County, um, only three people can um, be allowed that list, the U.S. lead list in uh, Virginia Beach City County in Virginia, okay? Or just another county, uh, I don't know, just throwing that out, Norfolk County or whatever. Only three people are allowed to have that, that inherited um, list from U.S. lead list from Norfolk County. So those are five, five ways, I mean, I can go on and on and on how to find motivated sellers, but those are five effective ways um, to, to uh, find motivated sellers. You use all five of those at one time. You know, you got the um, direct mail using app targeted absentee owners, cruising for cash, bandit signs, probates, and you got your inherited. You got all five of those working all at one time, all day long. You have no problem of motivated sellers calling you and you closing deals, okay? That's the main thing, to pick up a check. Again, Happy New Year. This is video one of our series, and I'll see you in the next, next video.